Okay, I have never played Alex Kidd in Miracle World before. I've heard of it. Uh, I had a running joke with some friends in middle school and high school that the Master System was never a real system. That, like, the only Sega system was the Genesis. I remember seeing, like, the boxes with the weird grid pattern on the back. Uh, but I never actually played a Master System game. Um, so this will be interesting. Let's give it a try. Let me know if the audio balance is okay. This game seems a bit quiet, so I'm going to try turning it up a little bit. Okay, so I can run and I can punch. And I can get a ring. So I'm really curious what the, like, Japanese version of this game is. <laughs> they, like, try to force the name Alex Kidd in the localization. Looks like he's like a little monkey man. That is death. Roger. Yeah, how is there like a pause menu? Okay, there are limited lives. It's a little scary. I don't know how far I'm gonna get given that. Touching any creature results in a death. Oh, it's really Alex Kidd in Japan as well? No kidding. Okay, I'm almost dead anyway, so let's just confirm. Okay, that stuns you, not doesn't kill you. Touching that spawns death. But he can only exist on the screen for a certain amount of time, it seems like. Miracle World is also in English, spelled with katakana. Wow. I mean, my words. That sounds like exactly the kind of, like, localization thing that would have happened in 1986, though. But it was, like, Legend of Monkey Prince or something. Sega had an attempt at a mascot before Sonic. I can't scroll back. It's like Mario 1. Doesn't kill you. Awesome looking frog monster. It blows bubbles in your face and kills you. Got it. Oh boy! <laughs> Don't know how far I'm gonna get. I don't know what all is worth picking up here, to be honest. If I die that early, I should probably just reset, but... I gotta get more used to the game. The best way to deal with death is to just scroll off the screen so that he ceases to exist. And what other games were on the Master System? I never, I've never seen one. I've seen every other kind of car. I've seen like an Atari Jaguar. I owned a, a Sega 32X. I remember playing a Virtual Boy at Blockbuster. Yeah, it's definitely one of the worst. I, I saw that box art and I'm like, you know, I usually make my YouTube thumbnail the box art, but I don't know that I could bring myself. I'm gonna get like the title screen. I'm sure that looks better. I think that's just true for every Master System game, is it had that, like, awful-looking white grid pattern, right? That was my joke with my friend in middle and high school, is that you'd see those boxes at, like, used game stores back before eBay became a thing and ruined all used game stores. 
with scalpers going to all of them and buying up everything interesting. You go there, you'd see like a bunch of Master System games, be like, what is this? Oh, shit. Alright, died at the same place, but I think I have a plan now, and it's to get down there more quickly. Now, how long to beat for this is two hours, but I don't know if that's two hours for someone who's played a lot of Alex Kidd and is just playing through it again to beat it. Like, I could... It's probably a reasonable how long to beat for Mario 1 All Worlds. For someone who's played a shitload of Mario. I don't want score. Over here, picking up the money bag is assuming, like, it does something. Maybe it gives you extra lives. That maybe matters. Man, changing the direction you're scrolling, that's crazy. Yeah, I saw that too. It looks fine. Okay, I can kill Frogman. I know about the piranha. Classic 2D game rudiments here. He just wants a little rice ball. Shop. Oh, there is a reason for money. Please buy the things that you like. You are short of money, aren't you? All right, well, now I've learned my lesson. I can get money next time. This be a scorpion, it kind of looks like a lobster. Much easier level than the first level. First level seems like it's trying to show off the look we scroll down and left and right. Well, it's a little janky when you get to the corner. You have to like touch the bottom left corner to be able to scroll to the right. At least the death penalty is relatively forgiving, even though the continue system is certainly not. several Alex Kid games, right? I actually thought this was the Alex Kid game that's in the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive collection. Uh, which, but that's a different one called Alex Kid in the Enchanted Land, I think. So I had to kind of scramble at the last minute to make sure I could play this. Oh, really? I should try that one. I feel really bad. Uh, I was enjoying Prince of Persia, but for whatever reason, my version of it was just not running well on stream. I let Yahan down. I was having, like, slowdown and frame issues and stuff that wasn't really described on the DOSBox page. Oh my glob, it's a boss. He's a giant foot? Is that what he is? Stonehead. The third henchman of the king. I'll let you win by here if you can win three Jenkin matches. I like how they didn't translate that. Choose paper, scissors, or stone before the music stops. He's Mr. Stone, so he always throws rock, right? Damn. This is actually RNG. That'd be amazing. Better accept the inevitable. And then I fucking turn into a pillar of salt? Lot's wife in Miracle Land. 
Damn. All right. Uh, for this stream, I am just going to play the game, and if I die, I start over and try to get back to where I was. If one eye keeps this on sublock, I might use checkpoint save state, so when I beat a level, I'll save state and then load it when I run out of lives just to get through the game, but... That's pretty great. Wonder if there's any trick to Rock, Paper, Scissors guy. Or if it's literally just Rock, Paper, Scissors. If this game came out today, you would expect there would be some kind of, like, trick. Ouch. Do your tech, dude. Okay, I can kill the piranha. That's good to know. Oh, there's an extra life I left behind. Okay. Yeah, I never played it before. Not clear how crucial it is. something. Don't know what that does. Probably in the instruction manual. Okay, it makes me invulnerable. Got it. Temporarily. Presumably. Seems like they matter more than coins in Mario, but maybe not as much as rupees in Zelda. Ouch. Really gotta be careful. That particular interaction is pretty brutal when you're like punching on the way down toward an enemy. Like your fist makes contact with them. But the part of your body that dies when it touches something hits them first. What if you could just walk over and punch him in the face during this? I'm just gonna like spam it in case that has anything to do with it. Maybe he does a different like animation when he's gonna use one ability versus another. It's a draw. You sure lucked out. Turns into salt and dies. Biblical. Dark. Okay, it takes me a while to get back to him. Does anyone know if there's a trick to that guy, or is it is it literally just RNG? <laughs> yeah, alright.
Uh, localization in 1986. Death. This would be, uh... There's a specific class of game, especially in the NES era, because my main way of experiencing video games as a kid was through blockbuster rentals. You get one rented game per week, about five bucks a week for unlimited entertainment. It was a pretty good deal for my parents. Um, and occasionally I'd rent an NES game that was just like completely inscrutable to me. I had no idea what the hell was going on or what it expected of me. And I was too stupid of a young child to just like figure it out. So it'd be like a week if I if I got this game and made it to the rock paper scissors guy. He's like, well, I guess this week I'm not playing video games. <laughs> Back Xanadu is one of those games. I played it as an adult and it's actually really good. But it, I did not understand it when I was a kid. That's interesting theory. I'll try that. What do the different items do? Yeah, right. Whoa! Oh my god, it's like... Invincibility versus invincibility at home. But it seems like I can lose it if, depending on where I hit the enemy. Do I have to, like, select the ring to be able to shoot with it? Oh, but it's a consumable. Okay, thanks. The motorcycle has a limited ability to kill enemies it comes into contact with. Is the ring a temporary upgrade? Makes world traversal much easier. Let's see if you're right here. Depends on reloading your save and knowing what he's gonna do. This is Undertale 1986. Oh, jam. Darn it, I lose. If the gag is like he's Mr. Stonehead, but he doesn't throw a rock, that would be funny. Okay, maybe it's... he changes based on whether you're beating him or not. Return to salt. He always opens with scissors, and then he always tries to counter whatever I just did, is my current theory. true RNG. Alright, so if he thinks I'm going to do that... Okay. My next theory is that he tries to counter whatever I just did. Hey, that might be it. Pretty chill looking. Ah, 
hot octopus. This is Nintendo's first, or um, Sega's first attempt at a mascot before uh, Sonic. That makes Sonic even funnier. Sonic's already really funny. Such like a reactive, like, market character, if that makes sense. Sega does, but Nintendo don't. Well, that was Sega of America. It's marketing, not necessarily how Sonic was portrayed in Japan. Last processing. seem worth messing with. I think I tend to take more umbrage with, like reactive design or games that feel like they're responding to market pressures. Like I'd rather a game be like really fucking weird and kind of bad but like risky than something that's like trying to capture a specific market or react to specific criticism. Not this game obviously, this is 1986, it's pretty early for console gaming. Prince from the country of Redaxian who was kidnapped by evil- oh my, look at all this text, this is incredible! Your native land is now being grossly misgoverned by the tyrant, Jenkin the Great. Your mission is to save the populace from him. Have a- a hat. <laughs> That's honestly amazing. The big story thing right there. <laughs> Giant lore infusion. Of the big full screen of text. Okay. Oh, wow. This thing's really hard to pilot. Oh, that's kind of an interesting idea. If you fail the helicopter section, you have to swim. I like that. It's different. The helicopter is hard to describe. It's like you had to mass jump, but depending on when you pressed jump, you gain more or less height. It was very strange. Dude, this is the weirdest. I can't really describe how it controls other than it's very weird. I think it would just be every time you press the jump button. It's like connected to the animation of him pedaling on the unicycle or something? Also, it gets stuck on blocks, it looks like. I'm really amused that this game is just called Alex Kid in Japan. <laughs> there's so many, like, there's like the yen bags, the enemies. Jeez. Okay. What? <laughs> I guess that was a boss. Prince Alex of Redaxian, you are looking very well indeed. We hear that your elder brother is in prison at the Redaxian castle. You are the only person who can come to his rescue. Dude, I love the unnecessary lore. That's great. Replace it with a hamburger? Okay, that's... 
They put like a dollar sign on the money bags. Sega executive, like, smoking a cigar. Kids aren't gonna know what this is. Does not seem worth risking my life for down there. I don't know how you get out of there. Hitting the skull blocks doesn't hurt you if you hit it with a ring gun or whatever. Oh god, should have seen that coming. Oh, wow, this room sucks without the ring. Uh, do I have anything? I don't know what that does. What the fuck? Shooting little lemmings out? Vulnerability protects me from lava. It does not. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I really need the gun for that. Just lost like four lives to that one jump. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Let's see how quickly I can get back there. Lives intact. I don't think I need the gun in this stage. I think that's probably possible to like jump and punch it at the right time, but it definitely feels like it's designed around the assumption that you have the the ring right there. Oh man, the screen hasn't scrolled far enough yet for me to be able to break that block. This frog has got an amazing sprite. I don't know, I, I have no idea, don't ask. <laughs> Top of his head doesn't count, I guess. That what? You're not supposed to be death, you're supposed to be a level up, or a l extra life. That's the opposite of an extra life. So maybe they're randomized, they either have death or an extra life. I think this one actually really benefits from the ring. Is like borderline mandatory in any of the side scrolling levels. Punch is fine in the ones where you're going up and down. Okay, so we assume he opens with scissors. Probably gonna roll paper. Okay. So I haven't done that enough times to be certain that that's his strategy, but.
Dude, there's something under the octopus pot. Oh, is it only his arm that can hurt you? Shit. Probably better off just dodging those guys. Just by punching it. That didn't work out too well. Alright, we'll not screw up the death block this time. Screen. Let me make sure I'm a little bit to the left here so the screen can scroll. There we go. Kind of a cool little transition. I just punch this guy directly in the head. I have to punch him in like the neck, basically. Okay. A little dangerous. Lobster scorpions. big wall is to keep you from having a motorcycle at the end. That's great. Very food driven kid, that Alex. How do I kill the arm? Do I need to have like a power up to do it? enough for that. Like a little interstitial map. Look at our world that we designed.
This is actually hilarious. I love this. Unnecessary amount of wise old man lore. Okay, so need to figure out how this thing works. I think if you touch a ceiling with the propeller, you fall, which I guess makes sense. Yeah, like that. the lemming ability is particularly useful. This is one of the weirdest power-ups I've ever encountered in a video game, which is saying a lot. It also kind of sucks if you don't have projectiles for it. You're forced to equip it once you buy it. didn't that time. I was pressing the button. I don't know what was going on. I had it the first time. Maybe I was holding a directional button too early or something. fight. It gets faster every time, which is interesting. Punch the shit out of that bull. really need the ring in this level. I feel like I got a second ring last time. Maybe it's from here. Down for the cabbage monster. Okay. Don't fuck it up. I would have said that I'm going to immediately fuck it up. kind of game where it's like the jump physics are like trying to jump into a block, break the block, and then land on top of what you just broke. Good fucking luck. Okay. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Did I scroll far enough over that I can exit the stage without going over the lava? Yes. Okay. Progression at least, I guess. Death again? No, another ring. More rock, paper, scissors? Oh man, he's, he's scissors head. Okay, so I wonder if they all have different AI. So the other guy was rock, but he started with scissors. So I'm going to guess this guy starts with paper. So I'm going to start with scissors. This little vest. 
Okay, now is he going to do the same thing where he follows my action? So do I do paper next? That time it worked. But who knows? What's a cane do? Wow. You do not want the motorcycle for this level at all. <laughs> that is not helpful. What the f- That's the weirdest power. Really doesn't last forever. Played me like a damn fill. Giving you the motorcycle in the worst possible level to have a motorcycle. <laughs> Adventure Islands, great game series. Okay, I might be hosed here. There's no way I can hit that without the ring and then, like, possibly make it after that. I could try jumping into it, punching it, and then continuing forward, but th I feel like I'm gonna die four times here again. Holy crap. I didn't. This is not a great game for death spikes. You're not quite as committed to a jump as Simon Belmont, but it's, like, in that territory. Oh, that's really mean. So if I want the power up, let me try scrolling the monkey off screen. It's fucking death, I swear to God. God damn it. I don't think the shops are random, no. Well, that works. Whoa! Uh, can I have a laser or something? How am I supposed to fight this guy? Oh my god. are the one thing I care about. I guess rings. List the left bit here. Scroll all the way down to scroll right. Of money though. Like, I think I can get. If I run through the level, I can get pretty far given the time it would take to farm. Five hundred for an extra life. Activate a ring from inside the shop. I guess now's a good time to test it. Okay, good. So I still have a consumable ring after that. I'm guessing you can't stack items in this. Interesting. Shooting a bullet roots you for a second? That might get me killed. Or would have until I just noticed it right now. 
reach you for like a frame. Not if you're in midair, which makes sense. I can activate the power up and then buy it to have another usage of it for a later stage, it seems like. Save myself if I screw up the lava level and don't have the blast. opens with scissors. We have to open with rock. And then... Tries to beat what I just did. I think that's the pattern. I think they open with the thing that their head is strong against. And then they try to follow up whatever you did. I'm glad that's not just pure RNG. That would be so mean, make you lose lives. Yeah, right, exactly. I think the name of the final boss is King Jenken, right? I assume so. rock, paper, and scissors at the same time. screen. Grossly misgoverned by the tyrant, Jenkin the Great. The way this thing controls is so weird. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it cares about what part of the uh like, unicycle animation he's in is the only way I can put it. Failed state. <laughs> Almost really bad for me. Should have a projectile, so let's see if it has it this time. Now it does. Okay, that was really weird. I was mashing the button and everything. It pays for itself, so I think that's always worth buying. Flying guys with a mustache called? I feel like I've seen those in Japanese media before. I forget the name. Sort of the D. They're gonna want to have the bullet for 
the giant bear with the fucking falchion. Terrifying blue falchion bear. So I know I'm gonna get another ring in this level, so I'm gonna activate this now. Gotta be kinda careful here, actually. Risk this. I'm using the power up can despawn if you're not quick about it. I don't even know if that's like possible to get to and then also get out of there. That seems impossible. Well, so much for having the ring for the bear. I have to activate it here now. This is the only area that I feel like I need the punch for. Oh god, this happened last time. Maybe ready for death to be in there. Or they'll leave a note to myself next time. Then there's a one up right there. Try to save it if I can. Oh yeah, I wasted it last time, okay. Scissors is strong against papers, so and he opens with paper, which means I have to open with scissors. I open with whatever they are, basically. And then I do paper next, I think. uncomfortable hands. Suck it. Okay, so I learned my lesson. We're not going to buy the motorcycle. I will pick this up because that might be good against the bear boss. Just, you just move the D-pad to move, but it, the way he shakes up and down makes you think that when you're pressing the jump button, it does something. Basically an extremely shitty P-wing. God damn it. I just need to hold forward, I think. That's yeah, really hard to... Uh... Hit that rock and continue on to the blue rock without falling. First time I got here, I thought that was going to happen. Oh god! I know this has death. So you want to hit it and get the hell out of here. Okay, perfect. And this should be a one-up then, I think. Oh, games with jump commitment. It can make sense. In real life, you can't just, like, suddenly change direction in midair, but... Get him, little Alex Kid Lemmings. That wasn't enough, okay. Oh man, he was almost dead. Right. Well, now I know. Whoa! Ski do level. It's pretty cool. Oh god, this is kind of like. Okay, it's a little bit more forgiving. I'll say it's kind of like a similar level in uh, Battletoads. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. 
Oh, I didn't move fast enough to get you off the screen. Oh god, that guy's gonna shoot bubbles and kill me. Oh no. Let's go down. Go down. <laughs> really hoping you would have lives, man. in death. Oh god, that's actually really dangerous. It goes all the way to the bottom of the screen. Didn't think about this. Can you soft lock in here? I think you can still get out via this. I might still be in trouble. See what the B button thing does, but I'm a little worried. What the fuck? Can't punch with that on. What a stupid way to die. Oh, and if you turn that on at a bad time, you're also hosed, because now you can't attack anymore. If you need to break a block, it's game over. It wears off eventually, okay. That's how Alex Kidd died. Uh, Future Marstead, you probably don't need to use save states for this. It's, it's tricky, but doable. Uh, the bosses are rock, paper, scissors bosses. The first thing they throw is whatever they're strong against, so the rock guy throws scissors first. And then they try to respond to what you just threw, assuming you're going to throw it again. So if you do that, you should be able to beat all the bosses. Make sure you hit all the purple question marks. Uh, maybe rewind the VOD if you're watching this early enough and watch this playthrough to kind of see what to expect. Oh, you can slide under the thing? You hold right as you press down. Oh, like... You can like, kind of like... Clip into the rock, I guess. Okay, try it next time. 